Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Current Economy and Investments Insights. Today is February 8th, 2021. Uh, I'm Ron Jankowski with Channel 4. And of course, I have my co-host for the show is Paul Municle with Ameriprise. And he's at his studio at his home. And we're going to stay our distance for today's show as we are trying to comply uh, with the guidelines. And so I'm going to let Paul take it away. Thanks, Ron. You know, today I wanted to talk about the big shift we're seeing and take a closer look at COVID-19's retail winners and losers. So let's dive into the info. The COVID-19 pandemic has led to a dramatic shift in where consumers spend their money. Some of the changes have stemmed naturally from the adjustments in our daily routines while others have been mandated by necessary restrictions on certain businesses and activities. Overall, consumers allocate about 33% on their spending on goods. The Commerce Department's monthly retail sales report is primarily a measure of such. We have graphs that show the dramatic year-over-year -year changes in consumer spending patterns exhibited in the month of December as derived from the retail sales reports. Now, some of the changes may not be completely intuitive straight away. So for example, it may seem odd that people are spending much more at grocery stores, but if people are spending, are purchasing less food at restaurants or in school cafeterias, grocery stores are going to see more business. All the extra time we're spending at home also appears to have led some people to look more closely at their surroundings and recognize how run down their living quarters may have become. Spending on building materials has been very strong for the months and we're up 17% year over year in December. Apparently, many of us have also noticed how run down we've become so spending on sporting goods was also a very strong 15% higher year over year in December. This may have also boosted spending at grocery stores for the dusting off supplies needed to keep all that new exercise equipment we're not using clean. Also, auto sales were a strong 11% higher in December. Here, the increase is not due to more new vehicles sold. The dollar value increase is reflective of more used cars being sold, thought largely due to people avoiding mass transit or moving out of cities, as well as a shift in the mix of new vehicles sold in favor of more expensive trucks and SUVs versus cars. All the data discussed in this commentary um, as well as that depicted in the graphs we have at Ameriprise has been sourced from the U.S. Bureau of Economic Analysis. So I'm going to send it back over to you now, Ron. And we're back. Uh, thank you, Paul, for that update. Uh, Ameriprise had uh, passed on the, the current information as of this morning of what's taking place with the U.S. stock index futures are higher this morning as equity markets Look to build on last week's gains. Treasury yields are higher after Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said the proposed stimulus plan could return the U.S. to normal or full employment in 2022. Very interesting to hear that. Uh, Brent crude oil futures are nearing $60 a barrel as supply cuts among key producers boost their prices. And the uh, last thing is Tesla plans to begin accepting payments in Bitcoin after announcing a 1.5 billion position in the cryptocurrency. Uh, the year-to-date index returns are S&P 500 is a plus 3.6%. Dow Jones uh, year-to-date is a plus 1.8%. NASDAQ is a plus 7%. Uh, things are starting to fall into be rather solid ground. Uh, and we will leave it at that for the show. Stay with us. We'll be back with the next show called Your Money. 
Paul usually has an interesting topic. Stay with us. We'll be right back. And we're back with your money. Uh, thank you for staying with us. Uh, Paul has an interesting topic, and I'm going to let Paul take it away, Paul. Thanks, Ron. And for the second half of the show today, <clears throat> I want to talk about a topic that lots of people are bringing up to me. Um, with interest rates at rock bottom rates, where can you earn some competitive rates of return on your cash? That's not an easy question. And I've got some solutions here, although really the rates of return at these places aren't much better, but um, feel free to take a look for yourself and make your own decision. These are just a few places to consider. Um, so, you know, investors have been forced to cope with an extremely low interest rate environment for an extended period of time, which does create challenges for those who need to maintain a level of liquidity in their portfolios to safeguard their investments or saving for near-term goals. According to the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, which is the FDIC, the national, I'm sorry, the average national savings deposit rate is 0.05%. At that rate, for every $1,000 you keep in a bank savings account, you will earn interest of 50 cents over the course of the year, leaving many in search of other investments to earn more than the average return from a savings account. Today, we're gonna to talk about five alternative investment solutions for cash, each with their own pros and cons to review. Um, and you may want to consider in this low interest rate environment, other options. These are five we're gonna talk about. Again, before making any investments or changes, talk to your own financial advisor, do your own research before acting. Um, but what I've got here, um, the first one is money markets. Most of us are pretty aware of this category. Um, money market funds are genuine, genuinely, or genuinely, <laughs> generally, excuse me, as liquid as savings accounts, but often offer modestly higher yields. In many cases, you can even obtain an ATM access to your money in those accounts, along with check writing privileges. These funds, which are provided by mutual fund companies and brokerage firms, do not carry FDIC protection like accounts from banks. Another option you can look into is CDs. Now, CDs are certificates of deposit, and they are similar to savings accounts when offered by banks. They do come with FDIC protection, but please verify that before investing. However, they do limit your liquidity. You lock up your money for a set period of time, anywhere from one month to several years. Rates are guaranteed and typically are higher um, than savings accounts. Although in today's environment, CD yields are often only modestly more attractive. There are penalties for early withdrawals, so you need to be confident the money can be put away for a set period of time. If you can commit dollars over longer periods, you can build a CD ladder by investing cash in a series of CDs with different maturities. As one CD matures, the money becomes available. You can invest it in a longer term CD, typically earning a little bit higher interest rate. Over time, Funds periodically become available as CDs mature, creating some liquidity. A third option to consider after doing your research is U.S. Treasury Securities. So these are government-issued short-term obligations and are available in varying maturities, typically paying more competitive rates than bank savings accounts. Terms range from one month all the way to 30 years. For shorter term money, you could look at instruments with maturities of anywhere from one month to two years. Principal is protected by the full faith and credit of the United States Treasury and is still considered the standard for reliability among debt insurers. If you need money 
before a treasury security matures, it can be sold on the open market. A last place to consider are short-term bonds. So if you're settling, if you're setting cash aside for goals that are three to five years into the future, bonds that mature within that time frame could be an option to consider. These tend to be less susceptible to the impact of interest rate changes than is the case with longer term bonds, which eliminates some of the risk associated with owning bonds. But be aware that these bonds can lose value when interest rates in the broader market move higher. Issuers range from the U.S. Treasury to corporations to local and state governments. Local and state government bonds pay interest that may be free from federal and sometimes even state tax. Short-term bond funds are an additional option. In conclusion, try and be consistent with your plan. Any cash management strategy you pursue needs to be consistent with your overall financial plan, and your financial advisor can help you explore your options and look at your different alternatives to traditional bank saving accounts to determine what might work best for you. I can't stress it enough, these are a few options to consider when you do your own research, you may find interest rates are so low that these categories, the interest isn't much higher anyway. Um, being that some of these different investments do carry risks, you do need to do your research um, on anything before you invest. Speak with your financial advisor and maybe your tax advisor before you make any one of these investments to be sure you know what you're getting into and to be sure the investment is right for you. And on that topic, if you are looking for a second opinion to a person you may be working with, or would just like to get my opinion on, rather, on various investments for your portfolio and your situation, feel free to give me a call. Uh, my phone number directly is 708-226-3412. And again, I can't stress speaking to a professional enough, um, talking to other people, what might be right, for example, your brother to invest in may not be right for you to invest in. And everyone's situation is different and requires special attention. So I always recommend speaking with a professional um, before you do anything. That's going to conclude my part of the show today, Ron. So I'm going to send it back over to you. And we're back. Uh, thank you, Paul, for your interesting topic this morning. For Paul Municle with Ameriprise Financial and myself, Ron Jankowski, with Channel 4 and PLS Sites, we wish you good investment day.